Week two of the XFL season takes us to frigid Seattle. An XFL North matchup with the Sea Dragons and the St. Louis Battlehawks both working on a very quick turnaround, but they got the support. XFL chairwoman Danny Garcia in the house yet again. So let's do this thing. Hello and welcome to Lumen Field, everybody. Laura Galindo here with Sam Macho. Week one was bananas. The best part about it, though, was the St. Louis comeback, one that you would only see in the XFL. Why? Well, because in the final 90 seconds, they score two touchdowns. They get the XFL exclusive three-point conversion. And then that fourth and 15, make it, keep it, alternative to the onside, they land that as well. Week one was outstanding. It was everything you love about football, but specifically XFL football. But we can't forget the game you just talked about. St. Louis coming back had nothing offensively until it mattered most. You're going to see right here. 53 total yards in the first three quarters until the fourth quarter. You see this. Hakeem Butler, 6'6", 230, makes the catch. And then this touchdown, last 90 seconds to Austin Prohl. But it wasn't just that. It was a three-point play. After the three-point play, we saw it. The fourth and forever, fourth and 15, make it, keep it. They made it. They kept it. Went back to Prohl for this touchdown. All of a sudden, a team that was down 12 with 90 seconds left found a way to win the game. Wild thing about this. St. Louis didn't play all that well until the final handful of minutes in the game. They're 1-0. You look at Seattle and Jim Haslett, they dominated large portions of the game against D.C., but they're 0-1 because of turnovers. And the psychology of that loss is going to play big into this game. Seattle should have won that game. They were up big for the entirety, for the most of that game, and then all of a sudden turnover, pick six, we saw a penalty, and then things started to change. So it'll be interesting to see how Seattle rebounds after a tough loss. We'll see if their quarterback, Ben DiNucci, can turn it Around. He's standing by on the sideline with Taylor McGregor. Thanks so much. And a quick week with the short preparation. How have you guys been able to prepare for this game? Yeah, we had a few walkthroughs. Uh, short week. A lot of us got a sour taste in our mouth, me included. So uh, best thing about playing Sunday night, got a short week this week and uh, get out here tonight, put on a show for our home fans. The costly turnovers a week ago. How do you make sure that doesn't happen tonight? Just just keep doing what I've been doing. Play the game I've uh, been playing since I've been young and uh, let everything else take care of itself. Can't bust over. I guess I'll get the show. And let's go across the field to Ian Fitzsimmons, who's standing by with St. Louis quarterback A.J. McCarron. A.J., remarkably emotional win week one. What did you learn about your team? I think the biggest thing is the, the words we always preach, family, staying together, fighting through the ups and downs. So, uh, listen, we, we know if there's time still on the clock, we have a chance to win. So uh, that's what we did, and, and we pulled a big win out. Short week, any level of football, it's not easy. How was prep coming into this one? Yeah, it's always tough with a short week. You know, uh, you get back late Monday, and then, um, you know, you, you really have a, a day and a half of preparation. So, listen, we just got to go out and play, have fun. Uh, it, it, we're playing a game for a living. This is awesome. Thanks, Bama. Yep, good luck. Appreciate it. Hey, guys, by the way, also think about this. Seattle opened this game as a three-and-a-half-point favorite. It's been bet up to four, total around 38. Short week, as A.J. just talked about. I lean under, Lowell. In week one of the four games, three of them went over. Home team in the XFL gets to decide if they want the football or to kick it. June Jones, offensive coordinator for Seattle, he wants the football. So we talked a lot about the new kickoff rules in the XFL. You will see both teams lined up at the 30 and 35. They cannot leave those yard lines until the ball is caught or three seconds after it hits the turf. Jalen Red back to return from the five, and here we go. Red hits his own man and is brought down at the 15. Now it's time for the Seattle offense. Run and shoot. Legend June Jones calling plays. He wants more deep shots from Big We're in red. We're in red. Trips right. 81 X and Z 9 divide. Trips right. 81 X and Z 9 divide. Here we go. Trips right. Trips right. Trips right. 81 X and Z 9 divide. On two. Ready. Set go! He oh, set the safety and you got it. Danucci taking a deep shot. Receiver picks it up late and cannot make the grab. But that is the type of communication we're going to hear throughout Let's the course go. of the game. Trio right, 51 flow, X crack, Reno to H. 
trio right, 51 Can flow, X crack, Reno to H. 51 flow, Reno to H, 51 flow, Reno to H, on two, ready. Flow, flow. Set, go! Hot! Hot! Danucci, screen. Blake Jackson made the catch, brought down in a hurry. Third down now for Seattle. Trips left, 61 Army X turn. Trips left, 61 Army X turn. Army X turn, 61. 61 on two, ready. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Bottom of the screen, that's going to be drag, Josh drag. Gordon. Former go. All-Pro in the NFL. just got rocked by Brandon Sebastian. One thing to know about this St. Louis Battle Hawks defense, they want to be physical, and they are physical. They run to the ball. When you watch their film, you're going to see hard-hitting yeah, defenders yeah. and tail. everyone running to that rock. That is Anthony Beck, head coach of St. Louis. His counterpart, Jim Haslett. Quick three and out, setting up the first punt. Neither team can leave until the ball is put in the air. Austin Prohl, the hero in week number one, nothing doing there. So now it's time to set up the San Luis right, offense, Peter led by two former NFL Houston. quarterbacks. Bruce Gretkowski calling plays to A.J. McCarron. 11-11, see if A.P.'s it. All right. AJ, see if he's all right. Hey, you good? 11 11, double right, Peter, can of a turn to Houston. Here we go, fellas. Let's go. Let's go. We got gun, double right, Peter, can, 200 jet, Houston, on one. And it wasn't just the play call that was Gretkowski asking McCarron to check on Austin Prohl, the sure handed receiver. Trying to get McCarron into a rhythm early. That is not going to get it done as Elijah Ponder comes up with a sack. Here you go. Trap right tight, 11. Trap right tight, 13 counter Z smoke. Trap right tight, 13 counter Z smoke. Here we go. Gun, trap right tight, 13 counter Z smoke. Go on. Gun, gun. St. Louis playing without their leading running back, Brian Hill. Kareem Walker gets the start. And there is Walker. Not much real estate to work with. Let's go 10, 10, 10. Let's go trips right, Eagle 40. Trips right, Eagle 40. Eagle 40-01. That 10 you hear is the personnel grouping. One running back, no tight ends. Third and 15. St. Louis will play it safe. And there are four orange jerseys corralling at the football. Bryce Thompson, Trey Walker with the stops. Last week, we saw this St. Louis Battle Hawks offense come off to a slow start. We saw a few sacks in this game given up by the offensive line and by A.J. McCarron. Hopefully, they can get in a quicker rhythm this week and not have to wait until the last 90 seconds of the game. Sterling Hoffrichter will punt the electric Chakor Peterson. Peterson, excuse me, back deep. Booming punt. Pearson from the 15. A little juke to the outside, a little burst, and he's brought down shy of the 30. Great defense by the Seattle Sea Dragons. You see a four-man rush. You see a stop on third and long. Dominant defense is what's going to keep you in a game. Big-time players making big-time plays.
Here we go. Pistol, opposite right. 25 for Honkos on two, ready. Peter Z hit. And then, tell him. When you hear pistol, that means that running back is right behind the quarterback. Hot! Hot! To the run game. A nice little jump cut. And Morgan Ellison, positive yards. Here's Donnie Abraham, former All-Pro cornerback, D.C. for St. Louis. Go. Go flex 52, 60, flex 52. 60, 60, 60. Set, go! Hot! Hot! Danucci steps up. He's going to use the legs. First down yardage. Smartly slides down. Let's go. Flex formation. Flex formation. Flex formation. Flex formation. <laughs> Set, go! Hot! Hot! Back to the run game. Right side, shedding initial contact is Morgan Ellison. Ellison, three carries for 17 yards in week number one. Going back to that last run by, the, by Ben DiNucci. He's elusive. Flex he has auto. speed. Flex auto. Flex 80 auto. on two. Ready. 80. 80. Here we go. Set, go! Hot! Hot! Deep drop for Danucci. Over the middle and complete to Blake Jackson, the former D3 national champ quarterback. Let's go, let's go! Let's go, hold on now, let's go! We probably got two in a row, let's go! Here we go. Eight, 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 so Becht giving his defense a heads up. There's probably a fourth down call here coming. Go, here we go. Here we go. If there's no conversion here. Set, go. Hot. Hot. Danucci flushed. Once again, the legs. And the second time he's converted with the wheels. We saw this in week one. Ben DiNucci's in the red zone using his legs to make plays. He's going to do this all game long if you don't have an eye on him. What needs to happen is that four-man rush needs to rush as one unit. On the trail, right? 60 Georgia Special X dig. 60 on two. Ready. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Play. Play. Set. Go. Ah. Locked in right side, but that is tipped and broken up by Lakel London, who was one of the defensive stars in week one. Cowboys on two, ready. Cowboys, Cowboys. Why not a little, why not a little? Set, go! Oh! Ellison hit immediately, spins out. That tackle won't work to the 30 with the little foot. Talking that mess too, Sam. And talking before the snap, I love Ben DiNucci telling Ellison, hey, why not a little? For this drop play, I need you just a little bit wider so that you're going to come straight downhill. You can run downhill with force. That's the audio we get. You don't get another lead. Let's go, let's go, let's go. 590. Set, go! Hot! Hot! Brendan Knox now in a tailback. Zip pass. And that's complete to Damian Willis, former star from Troy.
As June Jones calls the plays, we want to alert you to the scoreboard, how it works. The three dashes, the timeouts remaining. Below that, the red dash. Those are the challenges remaining. You must have a timeout to use a challenge, and in the XFL, you can challenge anything. Danucci, Pearson, the leading receiver throughout the XFL in week number one. Trips left, Dallas. Trips left, Dallas. Everybody run off second level. One, two, ready. Come on, man. I'll set. Set, go! Oh! Danucci to Knox. Knox, a couple of yards. Single high. Let's go! to Knox. June Jones just given what the St. Louis defense is presenting. It's not always going to be an all-out air blitz. With this type Let's of go offense, trips you're going to see left. dink and dunks. left. 61 H mesh. X corner. Cheat down to the numbers there. Oh, zero. H mesh. And we got X corner. He was telling Here Josh go. Gordon go. in zero to cheat down to the numbers. Set, go. Hot. Hot. Danucci looking for Gordon. He's going to throw it up. He's got Gordon. But thrown behind and enough time for Brandon Sebastian to break it up. You hear June Jones saying cheat down to the numbers. Why? Well, it gives you more space to run that corner route. You also heard him say X corner. He's the X. You're going to run the corner. Cheat to the numbers. Gives you space. Ball's a little bit under throw. But all that last minute talk that you get from the head coaches, the players can hear these things as well. If that ball is out earlier, is that a touchdown? Absolutely. So 13th play of the drive will result in a 29-yard field goal attempt. And it is good by Dominic Eberle. So the Sea Dragons striking first long drive where the offense got moving, but a win for Anthony Beck just holding them to three. This Danucci to Gordon, not Gordon to Danucci. With a fish. <laughs> And June Jones and Tanucci going over some details here. Time to kick it away again. Dominic Eberly with these new rules. He was brilliant with kickoffs in the first week against DC. Placed them either right inside the 20 or right in front of the end zone. This one to the 10. And it's Darius Shepard on the return. Tries to bounce it outside and he's brought down. Let's go to the sideline to catch up with Taylor. Thank you. I just saw you go up to your quarterback. What did you tell him? No, I just told him to hold on to the ball, tuck it when he takes off and runs, put it away. Don't have it floating around. What did you think overall of that possession, the way they were able to drive right down the field? Well, it was a nice drive. You know, we missed a couple of throws, I thought. They gave us an opportunity to score, but next time we got to score touchdowns. When field goals not going to win this game. Thanks, Coach. Lowell? Thank you, T-Mac. Hey, Jimmy Karen, back at it. After a three and out. To Walker. And Walker is stuffed by Austin Fallu. Hey, we're good. We're good, man. First play. Receiver mix up. Okay, just keep doing your thing, O-line. We won't hear a lot from Anthony Becht. He likes to let his coaches coach. You will primarily hear him when it comes to clock management. 
McCarron with his first completion, and that's the go-to receiver, Marcel ten, Aitman, ten, ten. his former Gin teammate right open, with the Raiders. Jet, wide slant at Bragg. Jim right open, 200 wide slant at Bragg. Get on the ball, let's go. Jim right open, 200 wide slant at Bragg. Jim right open, 200 jet, wide slant, Bragg. Go on, right slant. Yeah, slant. Third and three. This is where St. Louis would love to have Brian Hill. He's out with a bad hammy. Overthrown, looking for Pearl. Back to back, three and outs. And remember, McCarron's been out of football for a little bit. 2021, the NFL was one of his last games before we saw last week. And so even last week, there were some passes that were a little bit overthrown. And so we're seeing him get back into the groove. Yeah, Bruce Gretkowski like said he wanted to help him get in a rhythm, but how much can you help a guy when it's simply overthrowing, underthrowing receivers? Well, sometimes it is rhythm and it's timing. The other part of it, too, is when you're feeling pressure from your offensive line, it's hard to get in, into a rhythm. First penalty flag. I got, I got 17 unabated, so 17 unabated, offside, first down. Offside, number 17 of the defense was unimpeded with an opportunity to the back. This five-yard penalty results in a first down. So new life yeah, yeah. for A.J. McCarron. We're going to see how those calls unfold, and if they need help, we'll have Dean Blandino, VP of Officiating, standing by in Van Nuys, California. Started off there with Walker behind center. He's back to the right of McCarron. McCarron dropped by Aitman. Here you go. On the ball, on the ball. Stack right, 14 rows. And stack right. 14 rows. 14 rows. Over four. Over four. to the ground game and Walker and there is just nowhere to run against this Seattle front PJ Hall former FCS champ from Sam Houston State with the stop former second round pick from the Raiders in 2018 open back strike open back strike open back strike open back strike so you're likely to see a linebacker coming open strike from the open side, which is the side where the tight end is not. And here it comes. McCarron sees it, but backside pressure. He does not. Sharif Miller, the second sack for the Seattle D. So sometimes there's pressure and there's, and there's simulated pressure. You're going to see Sharif Miller simply just win one-on-one. -on -one. We see this the pressure from the right side, but Miller just runs around the edge, and then he wins one-on-one. -on -one. When you're a pass rusher, when you're an outside linebacker, you have to be able to win when you're not doubled. Of course, double teams, you try to win those two, but if you can't win one-on-one, -on -one, you can't be out there. Pressure on the punt, nearly blocked, and this is going to be short. Pearson saying, get out of the way. Decent field position here for the Sea Dragons. Week two continues Saturday on FX with the DC Defenders and Vegas Vipers. And Sunday, the Brahmas and Guardians are on ESPN at 4 Eastern, followed by the Renegades and Roughnecks on ESPN 2 at 7 Eastern. All three games also available on ESPN Plus. So Seattle, oh nice, let's feel a ability to get to the quarterback in week number one. One team that did, Houston, six combined sacks between Trent Harris and Tim Ward are going to be fun to watch. Set, go! Hot! Hot! Danucci lofts it, and he's got an open man, Blake Jackson. Second catch for him. Let's go spread right, stack left. Red right, stack left, 590 Texas. 590 Texas. 590 on two, ready. 
590. 590. Quarter, quarter, quarter. Quarter, you're good. That brings us to the end of the first quarter. If you took the over, you're sweating it a little bit because we've got one, two, three. Three points. That's it. It's all about the defense here in Seattle. Welcome back to Seattle. A 3 nothing lead for the Sea Dragons after one. Let's catch up with Fitzy. Especially when you, Behind the Blackhawks bench right now, where the Battlehawks right with like, Ricky Pearl, wide receivers coach, quarterback A.J. McCarron on this Bolt 6 go. tablet, the split screen guys, cutting edge technology. Take a look. You just got to pick that stuff up. You got to pick it up. And it's a big play. Welcome back to Seattle, Ricky Prohl. Danucci back at it. Pearson's wide open. Pearson's got the sideline. He's got some get up. Case in point. Six. 54 yards. Get off the field. What? Three. Left hash. Or right hash. Right hash. Let's set up the extra points. You can go for one, two, or three. June Jones, ultra aggressive. They always take the three from the 10 yard line. Hot. Hot. XFL teams, two for four for three in week one. Danucci rocked, but not before he let it go to Josh Gordon. Those were back to back outstanding plays. Starting off with the touchdown. You saw that motion. That motion affects the defense, and all of a sudden you see Jacor Pearson who runs a 4-2. He ran a 4-2. Get the touchdown. Right? That's the thing. And Josh, Josh Gordon doing what Josh Gordon does. See that motion by the running back? All of a sudden, Jacor Pearson becomes number three, and that, that affects Mike Rose, number 27. He has to slide over and push over. Well, that motion affects it, and then Jacor Pearson, who is a speedster, ran a 4-2. Played at Ole Miss, and then the conversion, Josh Gordon on this route, corner route, Ben DiNucci gets the protection that he needs. Josh Gordon. There you got it. All he wanted to do was play ball. Go. Now he's back. Touchdown. Boy, hey, we're going for three. We're going for three. We're going for three. Stay out there. We're going for three. Hey, get off the field. I love it. Touchdown. <laughs> When he got the ball, he knew it. And Pearson really has been the breakout star of the entire XFL. He was a relative unknown coming into the season. He was. He had 12 catches last week. You think on a team with Josh Gordon, you're thinking he's going to get all the targets. Well, we heard from their head coach, we heard that Josh Gordon was getting double teamed. And then so we have to find someone else to make plays. And that's what Jacor Pearson was able to do. Taylor. Thank you. Jacor Pearson, you said touchdown right after you caught the ball. How did you know you were getting into the end zone on that one? I just seen green grass and I had to go score for my team. But just chill though. Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> chill. You've taken the XFL by storm last week and this week. What is it about your skill set that you feel like has exceeded in this league so far? I don't know. I just want to win. I just want to I just want to win. That's it. That's it. This for all the underdogs out there. We finna win. Pull back to you. How can you not love that? Pearson leading XFL receivers in week one and targets, catches, and yards. And another incompletion there by McCarron. Let's go. Number eight, two Jack Hawks. Time to get 50 out. And that is Ron Zook, former head coach of Florida in Illinois, the DC for Seattle. McCarron, quick toss to Shepard. 
and Shepard with a solid game. Week three of the XFL season begins next Saturday night with the Sea Dragons taking on the Vipers at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, and it will continue Sunday with the Battle Hawks and DC Defenders, plus the Guardians and Renegades. All three of those games are on FX, and we round out the week with the Brahmas and Roughnecks on ESPN2 and 8 Eastern. All four available on ESPN+. Plus. Third and one. McCarran in to heavy traffic, but if you're throwing to Austin Pro, that traffic does not matter. 19 Wanda, Cannon with Georgia Houston. Move to double right. 19 Wanda, Cannon, 200 Jet Houston. Does McCarran look like he's finding some rhythm? He does. We hear that. Cannon, you're going to see it here. <laughs> then he's going to make a, make a check based off what the defense shows. We're good. We're good. He says we're good. They're running the hey. play. Quick check down to his running back, Mateo Duran, former single season rushing leader at Duke. We got 10 on the field. Oh my God. That was the third down where they had 10 guys on the field. And you see why it's frustrating, because last week there was a play they had 12 on the field. That's what flipped the momentum to have them lose that game. Quick pitch, Gary Jennings got the corner, got the first down. The former West Virginia Mountaineer moving the sticks. 12, 12, 12. Let's go move, move to double right, 19 Wanda, Cannon with Tour Jet Houston. Okay, move to double right, 19 Wanda, Cannon, 200 Jet Houston. Hey! Here we go, clock, clock, let's go. Move! Leave it on, leave it on! Set! 180! Wait, set! Durant, the slasher, that's a thud. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Trips right tight, Tex. 51 Y stick, X looky. Trips right tight, Tex. Hey, trips right tight, Tex. 51 Y stick, X looky at one, right? Yo, yo. We have yet to see him. Akeem Butler get involved. He's at the slot. To the right of McCarran, wearing 88. Steditz to Aitman and through his hands. Let's go 11-11. Jingle left, three jet wide corner pin. Jingle left, three jet wide corner pin. Hey, jingle left, three jet wide corner pin. F will. St. Louis one for four on third down. McCarron's going to scramble, using the wheels. He's got enough of them left, and he's got the first down. Ball is out. Is it after contact? St. Louis recovers regardless. I believe his elbow was down. I believe elbow down. Here you go, 11, 11, 11. Bunch right tight, Zach, yellow four so Bunch right tight, Zach. Where's the spot? Yellow four so Perfect. First down. perfect. Good spot. Right knee is down. Cart has a great look. First down. Set. So on the fly, Dean Blandino says Wait. perfect job. Wait, set. Tough call to make in real time. Durant hit immediately. He's dropped. No game. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. And Dean Blandino, so so before that, so you're Jim Haslam, tell his quarterback, Ben DiNucci, hey, keep your keep that ball tight. Well, now you see the ball wasn't tight. Now, Dean Blandino is in the XFL Command Center in California. He's watching all these games. Before a play can get snapped, he can call it in and make a change. Dean, what'd you see there? Second down. Set. Yeah, we were looking to see when the ball came out. Obviously, 
looking fumbled down by contact. Right knee was down. We had a great look on the car cam. We were able to confirm the ruling. And Karen hit as he throws, complete to Stephen Mitchell, another flag. Let's run and stop the clock. What's the result of the play? Five yard gain. Come okay, we're gonna, we're gonna have to distance roughing the passer. Number 92, correct? You lost five seconds on, on the clock. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. 92, the defense. This penalty will be enforced half the distance from the end of the play. An automatic first down. You can put 9-12 on the clock. 9-12 on the clock. 9-12. Please reset the game clock to 9 minutes, 12 seconds. 9-1-2. Oh, now. Chris, you'll mark off all fouls with me. Yeah, I'll see why he's got to play. Dean, what did you see on that call? Yeah, referee called a blow to the head. It was the right hand forcible contact to the head and neck area. We're looking at that as well and able to confirm that there was contact. Durant through the middle, physical run to the six yard line. Brought down by Antoine Brooks. Here we go. Now before that, on the end of the fumble play, we also saw a face mask that was not called. That is a play that can be challenged if you want an extra 15 yards. And so could that blow to the head. If there was a, a roughing the pass that you think was unnecessary or incorrectly called, you could use that challenge and correct the call. Eight minute motion. And it goes back to Durant, and Durant pushing his way to the shadow of the goal line. If we can go back to Dean quickly, hey. Dean, on that blow to the head, does it have to be forcible or what if it's incidental? Has to be forceable, absolutely. And when we're looking at that, if you if you run it in slow motion, it's always going to look less than forceful. You've got to run it at full speed. The ransom force, did he get in? No, the spot is just shy inside the one-yard line. Let's go. Double right. Z help. QB sneak on, right? Mike, get it to me. It's the XFL. You're down by 12, but you could make this a field goal game. Shepard behind McCarron. He's going to push him in. McCarron is in. Touchdown, St. Louis. I love that. <laughs> Two points. From the five, from the five. Good job, boy. So Beck going with a two-point conversion. He says he will always start there and adjust as the game goes on. The two-pointer from the five. Turn right. Hey, it's supposed to be left. Turn right. It's supposed to be left hand. 51, walk swap. 51, 51. You got the flat. Sounds like they wanted this ball spotted at the left hash. Right, trips right, so you have three receivers or three rece reception Wait, options to the right. McCarron for two, back in the end zone to Aitman. Give him two more. Former Raiders teammates hooking up. God! Good drive. St. Louis strikes back, following up the Seattle touchdown with one of their own. He was pumping his hands. There we go. Let's go. Down and dirty. I mean, shout out to the guys up front. Just keep pushing every single play. And that's all that matters at the end of the day. By the way, no undershirt, man. The belly every now and then comes out. This is just pads and that's it. That's how it's always been throughout the whole career. Get down and dirty, baby. Down and dirty. Hey, Asacho, that's your kind of guy right here. <laughs> and he used to be a defensive guy like you. He was a defensive tackle at Michigan State. Former defensive tackle. He was signed as an undrafted free agent to the Las Vegas Raiders in 2020. Spent time with the practice squad at the Carolina Panthers. He has NFL experience. Let's get back to another kickoff. Teams line up five yards from each other. They cannot move their line. 
until that. The ball is touched. Jalen Red recovers, wiggling, sideline, little crease. Oh, and he's tripped up north of the 26 yard line. Panishuk, that is a big, mean, nasty dude. That's why his coaching staff loves him. He's a beast. That cannot be easy to do, though, the transition from defensive line to center. It's not. You're usually aggressive as a defensive lineman. At center, you can still be aggressive, but you don't want to be overly aggressive all the time because you get beat quickly. And we see that Let's steam go. just coming off the bald head. Hot. Love it. Danucci back to work. Former Cowboys quarterback over the middle and a quick hookup to Jordan Vizi. Excuse me, to his tight end, Charlie Tamapia. Ben Danucci started at pit. Hey, Denver on two, ready, right, right. Lost his starting spot to Kenny Pickett. <laughs> <laughs> and then ended up with an outstanding career at James Madison. Hot. Lost Hot. in the championship game to North Dakota State. Nice run there. Brendan Knox. Give me trips left. 80 Z9 X levels. 80, 80 Z9 X level. Be bottom of the numbers, 15. You may remember Danucci's name getting a start really in an emergency situation with Dak Prescott was injured. Andy Dalton was in concussion protocol. Got the start against the Eagles. Sling of the pass and an immediate hit. Looking for TJ Hammonds, Mike Hampton with the stop. Week two continues Saturday on FX with the DC Defenders taking on the Vegas Vipers. Sunday, it's the Brahmas and Guardians on ESPN at 4 Eastern, followed by the Renegades and Roughnecks on ESPN 2 at 7 Eastern, all three games. Also available on ESPN Plus. Set, go! Hot! Hot! To Knox. A couple of yards on first down. So, betting is part of what we do here in the XFL. These are the odds to win the championship. It is the Renegades in Arlington, led by Bob Stoops as a favorite. The Houston Roughnecks and Wade Phillips, they started down on the list. They've rocketed up to number two on that favorite list. Set, go! Danucci flushed, a huge pressure, loaded up and going, Houston, I mean the dude's not that big. He was, he was, so he played slot, Jafar Pearson played slot at Western Kentucky, transferred to Ole Miss, then he played outside receiver, we talked about it. he's not the biggest guy, but wherever he lines up on the field, he's going to find a way to make a play. Yeah. Cameron Nizalek will punt it away. Darius Shepard is deep. Gunners cannot leave until the ball is punted. Fair catch called for at the 15-yard line. That's where A.J. McCarron will take over. 12-8, Seattle with the lead. Timeout on the field. Hey, keep it going. We're hot now. We got to take advantage of this. You just don't want to go penny, huh? And there are the head coaches, Anthony Beck and Chishnika. I mean, they said, I mean, he coached Beck and Beck's offensive coordinator, Bruce Gretkowski. It was a 14-play, 72-yard drive for St. Louis last time out. Move! 
They didn't wait to the final 90 seconds like they did in San Antonio in week one to get the scoring done. Wait, wait, wait. First down carry by Mateo Durant. Move to trips left, move to trips left. 19 Springer, Cannon with 300 Jack Cardinal. So that to Marcel, they give that look again. Here we go. Move, hey, just go trips left. 19 Springer, Cannon, 300 Jack Cardinal, I'm on right. St. Louis playing without their top running back, Brian Hill. Set. He's got a hammy, should be back next week. Durant with the carry, left side, man. He is throwing his ten, body ten, ten. right into the traffic. Ten, ten. Jim Wright and Tau, Ty, 50, Y, Ohio, F, Bragg. Jim left, Tau, Ty, 51, Ohio, F, Bragg, a one, right? See the clock winding down, 3.08. Left to go in the second quarter. There is a two-minute warning. Set. The clock will run after incompletions and out-of-bound plays up until the final two minutes, and then we will go to college rules. McCarron, quick pass, and finds Steve Mitchell. A flag comes in late. Behind, 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 behind. Got a face mask defense on the fight. Face mask on the defense, so we're going to tack that on from the end of the play. Personal foul. Face mask on the defense, tackling player. This 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the play with an automatic first down. Maybe missed the first one, got the second one there. And Seattle is helping prolong these St. Louis drives. Two die, tight end look for the Battle Hawks. Back to the wrong game. Solid on first down. Taylor. Well, Seattle playing without inside linebacker Jordan Evans. He came out on their last defensive series. I am told he is questionable. He is de dealing with a groin injury. And that is a huge blow. That's the defensive captain. Man that played 63 games in the NFL, but tore his ACL in 2021 and hasn't played in the NFL since. Two minute warning time. Seattle leads 12 to 8. McCarron trying to drive to take the lead. Let's bring in Dean Blandino, VP of officiating for the XFL. Dean, how does the timing work in the final two minutes of a half? Yeah, in the last two minutes, after incomplete passes and a runner going out of bounds, the clock will stop and then it will start on the next snap. We also added the college first down rule, so if the runner makes the line again in the field of play, the clock will stop and then wind on the ready for play. And Dean, what's the reasoning behind that set of rules? Yeah, I think we've got the clock running outside of two minutes. We wanted to compress this two-minute window, have more opportunities for teams to conserve time, comeback period, things like that, give them an opportunity to get back in the game. We, we saw St. Louis last week with a big comeback, and that's what we're looking for. Yeah, that's what you guys are trying to foster, and we definitely saw that throughout the league in week number one. So St. Louis with three timeouts and their challenge. Seattle, identical there. McCarron will throw, and he's got Aitman. Good job, good job. Let's go move, move to double right, Ralph. Move to double right, Ralph. No, move to double left, Larry. Move to double left, Larry. Here we go. What? Move to double left, Larry. On one, right? You got that? Hey, you got to come back. Move. Skipper. 
lined up in the care defense. Offside. That's coming back. Offside. Number 48 of the defense lined up in the neutral zone. It's a five yard penalty still. First down. So Skipper thought he had himself his first XFL sack. Penny, Penny, Penny. Four. Penny over four. Over four. Over four. If you're a fan of college football, you just hear that voice and you go, that's Ron Zook. McCarron, back to Aitman. That's been the go-to connection. What's up in there, right? Uh, the odd change. No, no, no. Got over four. Over four. Over four. Double F, beat tap. 310. Last stick, F, F stick on, right? Right hit. Hey, go, go, go. Go. Aitman now at the top of the screen. 180. Wait, time. McCarron. To Durant, Durant inside the 25. Give me some, 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 Plenty some, of time. Try trips right, Purdue. Trips right, Purdue. Trips right, Purdue. Hey, go three jet, three jet. Yeah, sorry. Three jet, Purdue. Set. What? You're in that Where's sub call. That's getting some of the pass rushers in, but great play by Bryce Thompson. So notice there's still pass interference, offensive, defensive, but there was no interference on this play. Great play by Thompson, a little bit underthrown by A.J. McCarron. And Durant playing with one shoe, if you saw it on the left side of that screen. And a timeout. First timeout. St. Louis. St. Louis. It's going to be 30 seconds in duration. Coverage of this weekend's ABC Hockey Saturday doubleheader begins at 12.30 Eastern. Then the Rangers are in D.C. taking on the Caps. Alex Ovechkin is back after the death of his father, followed by Sidney Crosby and the Pins squaring off against the Blues. Both games also available on ESPN+. One rule of note. You see those two timeouts for St. Louis. Will that one red challenge? Trip right tight, tech. 50 smash, wide jerk, come on, right? Hey, middle open, take it. You have to have a timeout remaining to use that challenge all play. And so it's good to use them, but you have to have one timeout in order to use that challenge. And Beck told us before the game, that's a rule that makes him nervous. He doesn't really know how to use that yet. So some confusion covering Durant at the bottom of the screen. McCarron just got it off. season. Akeem Butler is 6'6", six, six. he's 231, he was a fourth round pick from the Arizona Cardinals. If he would have been 6'7", six, 6'7", seven. Six, seven would have caught it. We saw him make plays like this in his storied career in Ames. He also made the touchdown last week to get his team back in the game. McCarron with another timeout. Is the crowd starting to get into it? Second time out of the half. St. Louis. Be 30 seconds in duration. Damn.
almost there, Sam. And, and this team is full. This team is full of tall Don't receivers. Marcel eight at six four. Eight at six four. You see Butler is six six. That one he could have come down with, but that's why they went and drafted all these big, tall, long receivers to target them, especially in the red zone. Butler was a fourth round pick by the Cardinals in 2019. Only played in two games in his NFL career. Bad break as he broke his hand in his rookie year. That Turn derailed three. him. Green Jet, Utah, X hand signal. St. Louis has converted their last three on third down. Pressure and a sack. The ball comes loose. It's still loose. It's picked up finally by Darius Shepard. But that's going to send St. Louis out of field goal range. One thing that shows up on tape when you watch the right tackle number 73, he shoots his hands, and so those hands are available to be beat. And so as a right tackle, as an offensive lineman, you want to try and punch, but if you're punching your hands, your hands are going to be beat. And you could give up big plays. Well, two's our skipper. Left too early the first time around. He timed it up there. You're going to call it with one? All right, Dean, yeah, what are you seeing? The yeah, first thing, is it a fumble? And it was. And then we're looking for a clear recovery. The ball was not possessed initially. It bounced around, and eventually St. Louis got on the ball. Third so the clock timeout. does not stop, St. and I Lewis. think St. Louis is going to take a timeout here to eventually stop it. And so similar to the NFL, you have your three timeouts in the first half and three timeouts in the second half. But that one challenge that you can challenge all, that does not carry over. It's one in the first half, you use it, you don't get another one. Second half and also overtime. Does Seattle come after it here? I don't think you do. I think you play safe. I don't think you need to pressure the pressure the punt on a play like this. Off Richter out of Syracuse, the punter. Short, short punt, but he's going for hang time to try to get this one to the half. And it's going to be down at the six yard line. Irrelevant because that takes us to half. Well, even more relevant, too, it did take us to half, but if that ball would have gone out of bounds and there was still time on the clock, any punt inside the 35-yard line comes out to the 35-yard line. So you saw them jump on the punt to keep it from getting out of bounds. A little bit of a slow start with both teams trying to get out of the gates quickly, going three and out, but it did not take long for Danucci and McCarron to heat up. They did, but both quarterbacks started off hot and i love what i saw from aj mccarron he didn't start off the way you would have expected but after the first series or two he finally found his rhythm he hit eight minute a few times one for that two-point conversion that's what you like to see and that's what we heard from their coaches teams are going to the locker room so are we it's against xfl baby halftime is coming up NFL. And that brings us to our first half stats, bre stats brought to you by Progressive. Lola Galindo here with Sam Ocho. What stands out the most, Sam? Stands out to me is Josh Gordon getting involved in the game. And we saw it. We, we, he had eight catches last week. But you notice his love for the game. When we talked to their coaches, Jim Haslett said, man, this dude just wants to play football. And so we haven't seen a lot of Josh Gordon yet. I think we're going to see a lot more in the second half. Seattle with 54 rushing yards. That's already three more than they had all of last week. And ball security has been there. Can they keep it up in the second half? Talk to Tom Luganville, who called Seattle's opener against D.C. 
you see today. Oh, now, what to do? Switch up looks post snap against Danucci, and that really got him out of rhythm. That's exactly what happened. You saw so much post snap movement in the second half that DC did, and that's what hurt Ben Danucci. And so, if you could see St. Louis do that, you'll see even more of an advantage for their defense. Home team always picks. Do they want to kick? Do they want to receive off the start of the game? Seattle received. Now they kick it off to Shepard and St. Louis. Neither team can move until the kickoff is caught. And Shepard is caught quickly with authority by Clarence Hicks. Fitz. AB, biggest adjustment, biggest change you want to see from your man in the second half? Yeah, you know, offensively, we just got to strain a little bit more up front. When our number gets called to make a play, we got to make a big one, right? We drop one down here. It's a tough catch. We got to pull that in. Defensively, we're in the right spots. We got to tackle. Tackle better as a unit, and we can't give up those easy ones on third down. So we've been doing better defensively, but we got to find ways to make more plays on offense and continue to move the chains. Thanks, Coach. All right. McCarron, 9 of 15 in the first half, 60 yards. Sack three times. Wait, 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 wait. That ball's tipped at the line of scrimmage. Austin fouled jingle him right with the stuff. <clears throat> jingle right, sack, 13 counter. There go, let's go, let's go. Jingle right, sack, 13 counter on one, right? One thing about St. Louis, they love to run these counter plays. You're going to see some pullers in the run game. That's what they love to do. Mateo Durant. Man, it looked like there was a seam there. Ten, Close ten, quickly. Ten. <laughs> Let's go double right. No, double left, three jet junior. Double left, three jet junior. Here we go. Double left, three jet junior, Soko. Soko. Number six. Set. 180. Wait. McCarron, Hakeem Butler. And Butler fighting hard for that catch. It's going to be short. What do you do here? Is it too early? It, it's too early, but the tough part about that is you, you heard A.J. McCarron talk about off. the sticks. What does that mean? That's the, that's the first down line. And so when you run that route, you have to run it past the first down line. That way, when you come back to the ball, you're not about six inches off or a yard so, short like you saw with Butler. Punt will look a little different than what you see in the NFL and college football. The Gunners cannot leave until the ball is kicked. And we've got a timeout by St. Louis or a flag on the back end. Let's check in with Taylor. Prior to the expiration of the clam. Here with Coach Hazlitt. Coach, you had a strong message for your defense at the half. What did you think of what they just did right there? Well, we'll, we'll see. We're not done yet. It's still fourth on. So, but, uh, you know, it's a good start. But uh, we, we, get, we were in disarray for about two series. We can't be that way. Appreciate your time. Lowell? Disarray, what did that look like to you, Sam? Well, what we saw in, in, in week one, their defense played a lot better. And, and this time you're seeing missed assignments. You heard him say stupid, missed calls. The, the defense, they're not communicating well. And communication is what makes defenses go. Hoff Richter, former Ray Guy finalist, boots it away. Pearson lost it. He touched it. Live ball. St. Louis back in business at the 22 yard line. And this is exactly what we saw last week. We saw turnovers by Seattle. Just like in the NFL, if the ball is touched, it's considered a muff, and you can fall on the ball. It's tough to tell. Card is blocked out. Yeah, I don't have anything clear. I've got it bouncing there, bouncing there, trying to get. Francisco, we're looking at it. We're looking at it. Just hold it up. 
I don't see anything else. I don't see anything else. Yeah, Dean's looking at it. Dean's looking at it. Dean, we're holding it up. We're holding it up this way. All right, well, we're gonna clear. We're gonna clear it. We don't have anything clear to show whether he touched her or not. We got to stay with the ruling on the field. The call's gonna the call's stand, coach. The call's, the call's gonna stand. They don't have anything definitive to overrule. Let's go. Let's go. Just couldn't tell. They don't have anything definitive to overrule it, so don't. Change. Call. Let's go. Call. Let's go. Call. Team, how are you able to go through the footage that quickly and tell there was nothing else to see? Yeah, we've got a couple of presets, so we know based on where the play takes place, we know which angles to look at initially. And we had three or four good looks, and we just couldn't tell if the ball actually touched it, so we got to go back to the ruling on the field. Dean, if they were to challenge that, let's say they were to use one of their coaches' challenges, is there a different angle that you could have used with more time? No, we have access. What's great is we have access to all of the cameras, so we can go through them. So if Seattle had challenged, they would lose the challenge. So it's a good decision by Coach Hazlitt not to do that. Three-yard carry by McCarron on first down. Shepard in motion. McCarron back to Shepard. Shepard trying to dance his way free. He's not going to be able to do that. to Butler, but that will be well short of the first down. Hey, you got to draw your face, baby. Hey, why the levy? Why levy right there? Let me... So field goal time for Donnie Hagman, 36 yards. And the San Diego State Aztec, no good. People talk about defending every blade of grass, even with, despite all the turnover and the defense going back out there. You hold them to a field goal, and then the field goal ends up being missed. It doesn't matter how you get there. Find a way to stop the opponent. Not a great exchange of special teams there for either side. Chris Payton Jones, CPJ, as you told me, he likes to be called, but playing for something much bigger than himself today. What's going through your mind? Um, it's a lot. I'm um, trying not to get emotional, but my, my uh, dad passed away this morning. Um, my mom told me the news. Uh, she told me not to not even come home. She said just play the game. Uh, that's what he would want. So I'm out here just, you know, with a heavy heart, trying to give him the best effort I can to make sure we come out with a win and, you know, just go back and just, you know, deal with it that way. What do you think your dad would say the fact that you are playing right now? Um, he'll be happy. I mean, I know he's looking down, he's smiling, that I'm out here, I'm still playing. Um, this what this, this made him happy. Me playing, so I'm out here playing. You've been through adversity before with some injuries, losing your grandfather. How has the game of football helped you get through these times? Um, it's helped me get through a lot. Um, just being around the game, knowing, you know, different things don't go as as planned. You know, football, you know, football prepares me for things off the field. So, you know, just going through different things, you know, it's hard. But at the same time, you know, I've been through harder things. Um, you know, I lost my grandpa, lost my grandma. Um, those were tough losses, but, you know, I'm still here, still playing. And I know they're proud of me. I know they're looking down on me. So, you know, it don't get no better than that. Well, thank you for sharing your journey with us. Guys? Inner thought.
thoughts and prayers with CPJ and his family. Meanwhile, on the field, ball is out. Recovery is made by Kevin Atkins, St. Louis in great field position. I'm not trying to get the football back for big number 90 right now. Uh, and he's big number 90 for a reason. This dude is great. He's a technician. You watch him. Hands are unbelievable. He shoots through his hips. And then when you play sound football, you find your way around the ball. He's standing, his eyes are open, and he falls on the rock. This is not like the ex the college game in that you can get up and run it, but a big man, stay down. So St. Louis has caught some breaks, but they still only have one offensive score. Trying to change that. Here's a shot. Streaking down the sideline, but broken up. Looking for Gary Jennings, and it's CPJ. That's for Pops right there. 11, 11, 11. Double right. Sam, are you kidding me? Well, we talk about football being this safe haven. You can wonder, how could someone, he lost his granddad in 2018, lost his grandma, got towards meniscus during the combine, loses his dad today. How can someone play a game today? But football, sometimes it's a sanctuary. You forget about everything else, and you play a game that you love. And you just want it that bad. Here's Kareem Walker. Nothing going. Setting up a third and long. 11, 11, 11. The other Trips side is the psychology. Chevy F Surge. Trips up to just Chevy F Surge. The psychology of football players. We're, we're great at compartmentalizing. So you said, okay, I'll come into this arena. I'll play my game. I'll help my team. There will be a time to mourn, but right now he's focused on helping his team win the game. It's a guy with six NFL starts in his career playing for his dad. McCarron to Pro. Pro got rocked by Bryce Thompson. Talk about playing for his dad. Pro's dad is the wide receiver coach at St. Louis. Pro played for Seattle in 2020 and had the first touchdown of the XFL season. Now, will the NFL look at a moment like this from Chris Payton Jones and say, I like that. That's a guy that wants it. They will. It, it. McCarron, back shoulder. He was looking for Gary Jennings. It was broken up by London Stevens. And before his injury, Peyton Jones was, he was a mid-round draft. He was projected to be a mid-round pick. But these, that's why this XFL league is so important. Players can get injuries that can derail part of their career. Sometimes you might get cut. You're player 54 on a 53-man roster. Then you get an opportunity and you shine. NFL coaches and scouts are watching these games. They're going to go back and watch this film. Meanwhile, that was former Seahawk Lyndon Stevens with a breakup. Back here in Seattle, McCarron, he's got Butler! Butler, did he not find it quick enough? Looked like he had him. It looked like he didn't accelerate out of this break. And, and I don't know if there was a trip or a stumble there, but as soon as you have that outside leverage, running the seven route, you see him, he's, he has outside leverage. It's, it's wide open, you have to accelerate. Expect the ball at points like that. Does that ball need to be caught by the former Cyclone? Has to be caught. Set. 180! Wait, McCarron, check down. And that's well short. Elijah Emmanuel Smith, check that with the stop. We heard Anthony Beck say yesterday, hey, oh, one of our players want to run certain plays. Well, you have to make the play for me for me to call it. And then last thing, you hear that base call, base. That's for field goal block. Remember we heard we're from Jim Haslam, on. we're missing Can formations. We we're, uh, we're now Hagman's looking at the clock. And they've reset it. 44 yards. He missed from 36 moments ago. You hear the crowd getting loud. to make it a one-point game. And we got a one-point game. Seattle will hold on to the one-point lead with 6.32 left to play here in the third. The game he loves to honor the man he loves, his father.
How do you even process news like this, especially on the day of a game? CPJ was told by his mom earlier today that his father had died. Yeah, Chris Payton Jones comes out, wants to honor his dad's life by playing the game he loves, and moments ago broke up a would-be touchdown by St. Louis. That's a lot of heart. It's a lot of emotion. I don't even want to understand what he's feeling right now. Humans are, life is hard. At the end of the day, life is hard. And I couldn't imagine losing a dad. But you think about, you say, okay, he would have wanted me to play. And now you want to go and play your best for your dad, for your family, for everyone watching. That was a great play and a great game so far by CPJ. And we've got a great overall matchup here, 12-11. Setting up for some late game drama with six and a half minutes left to play. In the third quarter. That's the Seahawks legend right there, Ricky Prohl, receivers coach. Father of Austin. They shared a great moment last week as Austin Prohl caught the game-winning touchdown. Here's Ben DiNucci, former Cowboys quarterback. Little check down to Morgan Ellison. Oh, Ellison hit the brakes. Catch episode three of the XFL docuseries, Player 54, Chasing the XFL Dream. Next Thursday at 5 Eastern on ESPN2. Available to stream immediately after on ESPN+. Plus. Directed by Peter Berg, this nine-part docuseries chronicles the creation of the XFL under new ownership and provides an all-access look at all eight teams. Danucci. Back to Ellison. Ellison, big physical receiver out of the backfield. Out of Southeast Louisiana. They call him Juice. Let's go. Spread right, stack left, Denver. Here we go. Denver. Spread right, right, stack left, Denver. Let's go. One yard here. Let's go. June Jones is saying this ain't Hawaii anymore. Former head coach of Hawaii, SMU, and the Atlanta Hunt! Falcons. Hunt! Back to the ground. Ellison, first down. Let's go. Trips right, Tampa. Trips right, Tampa. Hey, Tampa, Tampa, Tampa on two, ready. Tampa, Tampa. He is the authority when it comes to the run and shoot offense. It has evolved Hunt! over the years. Danucci with the keep. The legs have been a factor tonight. I love hearing these play calls because it has me thinking, okay, what's the play going to be? We've heard Dallas a few times. That's the draw. You see Tampa, the quarterback, kept it on the zone read. Hum to trio right. Hum to trio right. 60 Georgia special. X dig. If you don't have it wide ass open on the uh, front side, just come on back. Even specific directions on what to do post snap. Hot, hot. Looking right side. Here's Pearson. It will set up a third and short. Let's go bunch left, bunch left, X bunch left, 61 Georgia Z dig. Here we go, 61 on two left. Each team has 15 coach to player communication devices. The team gets to split it up. June Jones doesn't want his receivers with those devices in their helmets because so much of this is Reed's the snap and a little flex on him there by Brandon Sebastian former Boston College Eagle you love the physicality great eyes great hits 
suit up for work, my boy. <laughs> you like that. And we got to love this. Fourth and short. Here we go. Here comes the blitz. Danucci feels it. Stays up. Can he get the edge? He does. Danucci with the first down scramble. So Ben Danucci, he had over 400 rushing yards in college as a senior, over 500 as a junior. He uses his legs not just in the passing game, but also when he scrambles. We saw him scramble to the left, scramble to the left, scramble to the left in week one. Every time that B gap opens, we call it the honey hole. That's what you swing. That was quarterbacks go, go up into to escape and, and run. Danucci, why not? It's worked so far. Shetty tackles, tiptoeing on the sideline and getting close to the sticks. So now you see why the Cowboys drafted him in the 2020 draft. You see him, he started like, on Sunday Night Football. Let's go spread Part of right. Part makes this offense great right. your legs. Denver stare, D's. Spread right. Denver stare on two. Denver right. stare, D's. Set, go! Allison on the ground. St. Louis trying to strip that one free. It's first down yardage for Juice. Well, they're saying the ball is out. St. Louis is saying we got it. The ball was out. Nate Maters comes up with it. Progress, progress. Progress. Dean. Still in progress. <laughs> And of course, Seattle wants to go fast. They ruled forward progress. Okay. Ellison powering forward. Six yards on first down. So that's a time where you could challenge that play. You'd have to call timeout and then go and challenge it in order to review it. The timeout wasn't called, the play was 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 run. Hey, 80 on two, ready. 80, 80, 80. Play. Check it out. So I'm thinking about Check it, it out, guys. See what you can find here. See what you can find. The part of all these rules where Beck says he's still most uncomfortable. When to use challenges. Danucci, give him another first down with the wheels. So if you go back and watch week one, Danucci, Danucci scrambled to the left for that touchdown to Josh Gordon. That's what he does. So what the pass rush has to do is stop getting so far upfield. Stay corner, corner, in your corner. rush lanes. And he looks so much more. He does. He looks a lot more comfortable. And he's trying to. He, what they, yeah, they're saying third down on the field. And he's trying to say move the chains first down. We'll figure this out when we come back, Sam. Going into the fourth quarter, this is what you want. Game still in the balance. 12-11. Sea Dragons trying to win their home opener. Parker, go look at it. I, I don't know. I mean, oh my gosh. That's two yards past the first down marker. Danucci pleading his case that he picked up the first down by a yard and a half. And it sure looks like he did. It does look like he did. It doesn't look, look like he was in front. And that's the critical play. Third and short. That's the first down. Whole different set of circumstances. If you don't get this third down, you don't get the next one. Oh, this is quarterback sneak all the way. It's a go. Oh, bad snap. Did the ball come out? St. Louis is saying we got it. We got a St. Louis player Atkins coming out of the, the ball. ball. He's running the other Defense way. Defense has the ball. <laughs> Kevin Atkins. Are we ruling a fumble? He scored a touchdown. Danucci doesn't have it. Who, who ended up with the ball? Okay, so you're telling me we're ruling there was a fumble recovered by the defense. I didn't have the clue. That's the ruling, Dean. Fumble recovered by the defense. Okay, we're looking at it. I mean, here's the ball on the ground. The ball on the ground.
Yep, and we've got St. Louis coming out of the pile with the football. And I've got I've got the quarterback without the ball. I'm gonna take one more look at here at, at Skycam. Oh, he doesn't have it. Okay, we can go, Frank. We can go. Turnover. Clear the turnover. Early on the field stands. So the ruling on the field stands, it is an untimely Seattle turnover. Mini, mini. And that second recovery from Atkins tonight. Whitey, wait son. Walker up the middle. Walker still up to the 30. He refuses to go down first down carry. We asked. Oh my God. No, not again. Not again. Don't tell me he fumbled this. Don't tell me. Now, he says not again because last week Seattle was driving in the red zone and on a third and short play, Danucci fumbled the snap. Right after that was a missed field goal, which ended up being costly when you narrowly lose the game. And remember who recovered that fumble. We asked our coach, we asked the St. Louis coaches yesterday, if any of the, your guys, you think they belong in the NFL, which, which are they? And Atkins was one of them. Two recovered fumbles, in addition to his great technique in the run game. Stuff in the run as a nose guard. McCarron hit on the play, Shepard. Nice adjustment by Darius Shepard in a flat. So we did not hear that call. What was he was doing blocking downfield? Pass interference on Darius Shepard. Fitz. I've got Atkins here with me. Take us onto the field. Short yardage, first down on the line. Take us on there. What would happen? Uh, you know, we just uh, did what our coach taught us. We groundhog, big man 9-6. He, uh, he hit the center, you know, and made the uh, quarterback bump into him, and he fumbled the ball. I just picked it up. I think he scored, but hey, that didn't get reviewed. What will Marcus Spears say? Big man ball. There it is. Shout out to Matthew Rock. At P.I. Back St. Louis up. That was Beck calling for the timeout. Hey, hey, oh, I want to check. I want to check. See an extension of the arms. Welcome back to Seattle. Let's go to Van Nuys to check in with Dean Blandino, VP of officiating. Was that offensive pass interference, was that a challenge? It was a challenge. So the call and the fail was offensive pass interference. And St. Louis did challenge, saying it wasn't. We looked at it. There was an extension. That's what the officials are looking for, extended arms. There was some contact. The arms did extend. We just didn't feel it was enough to overturn. And, Dean, this is one of those things. You can't do this in the NFL. You can't do this in college football. Correct. Yeah, we're, we're, we have an extra layer in place. And, look, if the, if the evidence is clear, the video's there, that it wasn't a foul, we can change it. Awesome, Dean. Thank you so much. So what happens is... Anthony Beck, he challenges, he calls timeout, he challenges, he loses that timeout, and they still, it's still that 15-yard penalty for offensive pass right, interference. Good. But that's a play you can't review in other leagues, a it, pass interference, a penalty. And this is the play that Bill Belichick has been buying for the NFL to add. He's been talking to the competition committee, saying, can we add this challenge? Now we're seeing it in the XFL. So no challenges left for St. Louis. Quick pass to Shepard, who was called for the P.I. He gets it to the 20. 
Sam, what do you think? Take a look at this play. So when it comes to the rule, all you're looking for is an extended arm by the receiver. There is an extended arm. And so that extension equals offensive pass interference. If there would not have been that arm extension, then you could have overturned the call. But when the referee throws the flag, and all he's throwing is based off of that extension. McCarron backed off screen to Walker. Walker takes it to the 30, so just short of the original line of scrimmage. Let's go bunch right, three jet. Cook. Bunch right, three jet, F Cook. There you go. Bunch right. Bunch right. Three jet, Obama. On one, right? Hey, go F middle. It's former hey, NFL quarterback like Bruce Gretkowski, the OC for St. Louis. Wait in the play clock. McCarron's got to get this off. He does. McCarron from his back foot. Outstretched arms of Gary Jennings. Not enough. Referee has a penalty well, for the hands flag. to the face on the offense. What's the result of the play? He passed. They're going to want to decline it. They want to decline it. Result of the play is incomplete pass. Line so coming out of this. Francis ref it. not working, but illegal hands to the face on the well, he, offense. So him. this is the type of drive that's going to drive a coach crazy. And let's go back to that challenge. Sometimes emotions can get the best of you. Anthony Bexley regretted last week saying, man, I almost wanted to use it. I didn't know if I should use that challenge. And then this week, earlier in the game, he was thinking about using that challenge for that fumble. Now we're seeing there's one player who's not on the field for St. Louis. This motion allows the defense time to make any adjustment, any adjustments they need to make. Hoffrichter punting it away from the 20 low line drive. Here's Blake Jackson. Jackson's just going to let this one bounce. It's going to be down near the 35 yard line. FX Snowfall is back for its sixth and final season where a feud threatens to destroy the Saint family. Every Wednesday at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on FX, also streaming on Hulu. Smitty! Let's go. Spread left. The turnovers. Spread left. Twin right. Bucks lock. Here we go. Spread left. Twins right. Bucks lock. On the two issue right. for the Sea Dragons in the second half with three of them, and that's the knock on Danucci. First career start with the Cowboys. Two lost fumbles. First start in the XFL last week. Two picks and a lost fumble. And he's got a lost fumble here tonight. To the ground game. Giving Danucci a break. And that is Ellison. Short game. We heard Jim Hazlitt say earlier to Danucci, hey, protect that football. Let's go, coach, uh, especially defensive coach. Spread left, twin right, Bucks Ripper, A oh, smoke. Bucks Ripper, well, go get him. Smoke. Don't, don't work Spread toward him, right? He's, right. He's, here we go, here we go. Set, go! Hot! Hot! Danucci, quick pass. Brought in by Blake Jackson. So 23 total points. So you're feeling good with the under right now with 11 minutes left. But a lot of time, Sam. Third and five. Danucci out of the hands of Blake Jackson. Would have been short of the first down, even if you made the catch. Keep coming, AD. So both teams had electric offensive drives in the first quarter, and after that, it's really slowed down. It's only week we lost. It's only week two, but you can start to notice trends with teams. And the trend with Seattle that we've seen is this hot start and the fizzle out. 
What they need to change in that trend is find a way to finish well. It's turnovers that matters a lot, but it's also some of the penalties. Find a way to eliminate those turnovers, which means protecting the ball. No penalties. Get back into this game. Beautiful Seattle. It's cold tonight. St. Louis would really like to have more of an effective run game. They do not have Brian Hill, the standout former NFL running back. Hurt his hammy early in the comeback win last week. Returned played on that, but did not travel with the team. So Durant and Walker are trying to pick up the slot. 180! 180! Here's A.J. McCarron to pro. Hey, it's fourth quarter. It's Austin pro hey, time, baby. baby. And let's go on the ball, on the ball, on the ball. On the ball. Double right, 350, dragon wide spot. Double right, 350, dragon wide spot. 350. 350, dragon wide spot. Pro was a key figure that comeback. As St. Louis trailed by 12 in the final 90 seconds against San Antonio. Out of the backfield, Durant hit the brakes, cut back inside. And it's collision time. Hey, Sam, that's one thing they're go, not calling early in the XFL. I say I haven't seen a lot of these late hit calls. That was a hit out of bounds, and it wasn't called. Set. Wait, 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 wait. McCarron to Durant. Durant spinning on the right ball, out of the, the sticks. The it looks like he's going to have the Let's first down. Trough left. Trips left, trips left. 200 jet. X hitch. Y brag. Trips left, turn jet, X hitch, Y brag. McCarron with a 17 game NFL career. Two and two as a starter. Quick pass to Hakeem Baller. Former teammate with the Raiders. Week two continues Saturday on FX with the DC Defenders and Vegas Vipers. Sunday, the Brahmas and Guardians are on ESPN at 4 Eastern, followed by the Renegades and Roughnecks on ESPN 2 at 7 Eastern. All three games Wait, also available on ESPN+. Plus. The Renegades and Bob Stoops now the favorite go, to win go, the XFL go. after week one. They beat Rod Woodson and the Vipers. They didn't have an offensive touchdown in that game. They're about to, be, they're about to see some defense with the Roughnecks and Tim Ward and Anthony Harris on the outside. You know it. McCarron, he's got a man to rent. It was over his fingertips. Quinterio Cole in coverage. Little bit missed time. A little bit misplaced ball, but you wonder how many times that that Mateo Durant has run this route. Remember, Brian Hill was the starting running back, hurt his hamstring last week. He broke that big run that brought this team back in the game. It could be a timing issue because of a backup running back. Set. Wait, 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 Walker, back foot, shot to Butler. Hey, two, 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 two. Hey, clock's going, AJ. Clock's going, AJ. Clock's going. Two. Where you want it? Where you want it? We're seeing shades of last week. It came Butler late game touchdown to get his team back in the game. A former Iowa State Cyclone had that first touchdown of the comeback. He's had a couple of drops tonight. Redemption. Two-point conversion here from the five. To make it a seven-point game, going back to Butler. Butler, can I make the catch? All right, break it down, Sam. So Akeem Butler 
We're going to see him on this touchdown. It's a 44-yard reception. Notice he's lined up a little bit wider. He's 6'6". Six, six, he's tall. The safety has to stay inside leverage. Once he gets cut across his face, it's hard to make this play. And then that stiff arm is what leaves the rest is in for history. And so, see Akeem Butler, fourth-round pick. Oh, oh, God. Damn, it's done by Trey Walker. This is why Akeem, Akeem Butler was drafted in the fourth round by the Cardinals in 2019. Plays like that. Injuries can, can mess up your trajectory, but plays like this can bring you back into the hey, fold. If we wait in the games, we start defense, to see that NFL level. pedigree, the national champion pedigree by McCarron. Here's Blake Jackson at the 10. On the catch. Ash him off. He's full. You see on the scoreboard. Trips left. 561 Houston Mesh. You don't have a clear look over here. Get to the. Trip left. Trip left. 561 Mesh Houston. On two ready. Yes. We got the total yeah, at 38 right. points. The over starting to feel a little bit better. Seattle favored by four. Now down Hunt. by five. Hunt. Danucci steps up. Confident throw over the middle to the former Troy standout, Damian Willis. Fitz. Hakeem, walk us through that play. Walk, walk us through that touchdown. I'll, uh, Coach Bruce gave us a good call, and they gave us the coverage that we like, so touchdown. Simple as that, boys. There you go. To the point. That dude was an all-out beast in his career at Iowa State. Danucci's going to use the legs again, waiting until the last moment to commit. It takes him to the 35. Trips right, half. Trips right, half. Flip 51, Z go. Here we go. Flip 51, on two, ready. Flip 51. Seattle Sea Dragons only two of eight on third down. Go. Pearson has Hunt. been quiet in the second half. Sideline shot. San Luis breaks on it and breaks it up. That's Mike Hampton in coverage. Oh. Hey, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Fourth and one. Gutsy call here by Jude Jones and Jim Haslett. Danucci will throw, looking for Jacor Pearson. It's low. Turnover on downs. We're not run the ball. And did you hear that? Danucci said, can we not run the ball? Well, you wonder, it's third. You wonder, why do you take a deep pass on third and one? Well, you take that because you're going to go for it on fourth. No, 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 no. That's your boy. Let's go. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Set. But if you remember about that running clock in the XFL, the clock would run. Wait, it's, it's worth the risk. Carry here to Durant. Now the counter would be, can we not run the ball? They ran the ball at the one-yard line late against D.C. And Danucci fumbled the football. And it, trips left, Mickey Cole. Trips left, Mickey Cole. And they ran a quarterback sneak earlier on, on third or fourth and one and on a, on a fumble. Trips left. 
Mickey Cole on one, right? Yes. No lead is hey, safe. Hey, mini, mini, mini. I get Sam Lewis. Here we go. Let's go. Set. One eighty. Like side. Back to the ground. And Durant. Durant's going to make this a third and one. Our NBA Saturday primetime matchup on ABC in the ESPN app features Jason Tatum and the Eastern Conference leading Celtics taking on Joel Embiid and the Sixers, who are just three games back. Our coverage begins with NBA countdown at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Possible preview of the Eastern Conference Finals. Come on, Mateo. You heard that? Come on, Mateo. Mateo Durant. Gets the ball, but he's going backwards. Tuzar Skipper with the TFL. Former HBCU star at South Carolina State. Two thought processes when you're thinking about why would you go for it on that earlier one. One, you trust your defense. Number two, you know that clock is running. It's unlike the NFL, the clock within five minutes, it'll stop out of bounds. XFL, it keeps on running until the last two minutes. So the defense made a stop. If this field goal's made, the game is still winnable. From 50, will it have enough? Drama, action, intrigue. And let me correct myself with Skipper out of Toledo. Field goals have been a risky oh, proposition oh, through five on. games in the XFL. Danucci has a shot. What does he do with it? Three minutes left. He's got Josh Gordon. Gordon to the 40. Slips the tackle. Down to the 26-yard line. Waiting for the former All-Pro to break out, and he just did. 34 yards. Josh Gordon led the NFL in receiving in 2013. He set records, a four-game record for most receiving yards in that same year. An All-Pro. He's had his ups and downs. He's happy to be back playing football. Set, go! Hot! Hot! To the ground game. Allison to the 22. Trips left. Trips left. ADC 9. X levels. You got the 12, 0. Indy right. split, Indy split, tighten down. Over the top of the backers. So it was a command to Josh Gordon. And we've got a whistle because we are now at the two minute warning. Are you not entertained? The XFL absolutely bringing it through five games. Both guys, aloha. You got it, you got it. Go! Touchdown! Now we're talking! That's a drive! You gotta go now. If you're not in protection, go. You like this business? Georgia's deep corner on two, ready. The access that you only get here in the XFL. Seattle down by five, two minutes left. A second and five for Ben DiNucci, the former Cowboys quarterback. DiNucci back foot, he's got Pearson. Pearson to the 10 yard line. Trips left, trips left, 
61 H mesh X corner in the split. Anytime you hear that mesh word, you know those two inside most receivers are gonna cross. It's great against man. Danucci left side, oh, Jacor Pearson tried to make an amazing catch. Ben DeLuca with a breakup. Ben DeLuca, great eyes. He was going for the interception, the game ceiling. <laughs> oh, we gotta make a play, guys. We gotta make a play. Is a breakup not a play? He wanted the pick six? He wanted the pick six. He wants to score on defense. Let's go! Let's go! Hut! Hut! right side off the fingertips and incomplete. Looking for Jordan Vesey. Let's go flex, 52 lurk, stay. Flex, 52 lurk, stay. Let's go. 61. Set, go. Third and goal. Four down territory. Has to be. Danucci pressure. He slips one tackle. Complete to Ellison. Is he still up? That will give Seattle a shot here on fourth down as Ben DeLuca was all over it. You want to guess who was in the backfield making that play for St. Louis? Your man. <laughs> Big number 90, Kevin Atkins. He forced that. Score. So not a, I get it. Do whatever you got to do, score. Split 51, split 51, split 51. Run it, run a go route. Split 51, split 51. Here's the play of the game for Ben DiNucci in Seattle to try to avoid an 0-2 start. Hot, hot. DiNucci. It's going to be batted down and short. So 121 left for Anthony Beck, A.J. McCarron, and St. Louis to do it again. What? <laughs> and a great catch by Jordan Vesey. And they ran this same play, you heard it, that Y in that Z post. It puts the defenders in conflict. You have two posts coming across Listen. the middle, and then a perfectly placed ball. Oh, oh. what? Why with me, bro? <laughs> Go for two. Go for two. 
You heard him saying go for two. Well, why? You go for two and make it a three-point game. They went for three from the 10-yard line, didn't make it. Now a field goal for St. Louis wins it. I get it, June Jones offense, you want to go for the three-point every time, make it a touchdown to win it. But if you miss it further away, now a field goal will win the game for the St. Louis Battlehawks. Biggest play of Jordan Vesey's career. He was signed to the Washington practice squad after that much publicized workout with Colin Kaepernick in 2019. Here's the return for St. Louis. Backed up inside the 25. Let's check in with Taylor. Brunswick, one last message to your defense before this last yeah, series. Time to play now. Now they got to play. There you go, guys. <laughs> He's got to go. <laughs> You heard him say they got to play. This is what you play for. I don't care what level. High school, college, peewee, NFL. You play as far as the defense goes in offense. Fourth quarter, game Dragon. on the line. Have to make a stop. You know it's four down territory. One timeout within the final two minutes. The clock will stop. Out of bounds. And on incompletion. Wait, wait, wait. And first downs. And so the ball is respotted. McKinnon flushed. He's going to use the wheels. It's not just the new that can scramble, big pickup. This is when that two-time national champion for man. Silver penny for penny. man. Silver penny for man. Silver penny for man. We got to keep away from the 35-yard line, guys. Got to keep away from the 35-yard line. And the significance of the 35. The field goal wins it. 35-yard line. That puts you in about a 52-yard field goal. A field goal wins. Keep them out of the 35. You're protecting the 35-yard line. McCarron. You're trying to avoid this sack. He does it again. Directing traffic. And again, it's McCarron with the scramble. Getting closer to midfield. Good job, AJ. <laughs> Let's go trips left, trips left on the ball, trips left, trips left on the ball, 200 jet Purdue, trips left, 200 jet Purdue. True, Christ for true. Christ for true. And two touchdowns Set. in the final three minutes against Wait. San Antonio. They need a score here with 58 seconds. Downfield, bobbled in and out of the hands of George Campbell. You talk about keeping away from that 35. You catch that, you're right in that same area. But not to worry, A.J. McCarron has been here before. Back-to-back -back national championships. He won it three times, one year he didn't on, play George. as a redshirt freshman. And then last Andy. week, brought his team back from down 12 points with 90 seconds left. Titan. Critical times, he has the experience. Boy, Boy, McCarron, back to him. This time complete, George First Campbell. Time. Former Mountaineer. Trips right. Trips right. Trips right, Mickey. Trips right, Mickey. Trips right, On the ball, Mickey. go, go, go. Mickey. Mickey. Seattle go. trying to protect On the, the 35. On the quick. Set. Coming up on 30 seconds left to Walker. Walker's got the 40. Walker's got the 35. Trips right, trips right, trips right. Oh, no. Trips right, trips right, trips right. Let's go. Three jet, three Jenny. jet Purdue. Hey, Purdue. Second and three for McCarron. Taking a shot to pro. Overthrow. So seven seconds. You got a timeout. It's third down. Let's go, gin left tight, gin left tout, tie, 50 Haas, 51 Haas, F, Juke. Gin left, gin left tight, tie, 51 Haas, Juke. Go, go, get lined up, get lined up, Hakeem, go, go. Kareem, go. AP, now, 180, one second.
He was the clutch receiver in the comeback win against San Antonio. Back in the city where his pops was a star and doing it again. And you have to wonder, his dad played 16 years in the NFL, won a few Super Bowls. You have to wonder when he was a little kid being around greatness, knowing he has to get inside on that route. Gets inside, calls timeout. Donnie Hagman for the win. Missed from 50 by about a foot. Here from 44. Time to ice the kicker. Timeout Seattle. Time to block this thing. This was the miss from 50. Good direction. Just not quite enough on a windy, cold night here in Seattle. Zero and he gets hey, beat inside. They can't take two in a row, right? AV, how's the blood pressure? Just like we scripted it, right? That's exactly, <laughs> they talk about scripts, that's a script right there. Listen, you gotta play four quarters, right? I mean, always have confidence in your guys. It's a hell of a drive by AJ, working the clock, guys making plays. We need a couple plays throughout this game. Guys made on the last drive again, two games in a row. I'm proud of this team, man, we're 2-0. What, what have you learned about this bunch? I mean, you know, season games. You Five weeks to get ready, and you've had two coronary type games back to back weeks. What have you learned about your men? One, we can play on the road, number one. That's great. Uh, but I, I, listen, they're resilient. I mean, these guys play. We practice these scenarios all the time throughout training camp. And, uh, you know, look, had a lot of faith in Donnie, too. Struggled a little bit today, kicking the football, and made it happen for us, man. So that's what you do. You bounce back. He got that opportunity, and I'm glad for him. I'm happy for Donnie on that one. What's it like watching? snap hold kick the execution as a head coach i mean all, that stuff is like routine right it should be easy right? it shouldn't be hard for our guys to do it but um you know listen you know you, you put yourself in a position to make those plays and you just trust the process so i'm happy for don i'm happy for this team and uh, like i say we're two and oh two and oh congrats right. appreciate you For the second straight week, you guys come back victories in the fourth quarter. What are the qualities of a team to be able to make that happen? A bunch of dogs. <laughs> Listen, this team uh, never quits. And um, man, I, I'm just so proud of these guys. I really am. Uh, this team means a lot to me. And uh, it's, uh, it's freaking awesome, dude. I, I'm loving it. I'm loving every minute of it. How would you describe what this team means to you? It's family. I tell you, it's everybody says it, but we have an unbelievable group of guys on this team. Not a bad person. Like everybody comes in, works their ass off. Excuse my language, um, but it's it's so much fun to come to work every day, and we're playing this game uh, for a living, and it's awesome. I love it. And you guys had a short week with limited practice to prepare. What were the challenges in game that you had to adjust to because of that? Timing. I mean, we did nothing but walkthroughs. So, and, and it's always tough, you know, guys banged up injuries and then coming back, bouncing back that quick to play. But, uh, oh, this feels good, right? Uh, 
St. Louis, 2-0, baby, let's go. I know last week it was really emotional with your family and your boys being able to share that. What will you tell them about moments like this in your career? I think them watching daddy never give up. Uh, you know, ever since I came out of college, I've been kind of counted out a little bit. And, uh, you know, it's just fun to come out here and play. I, I just, I miss playing. Uh, not always just being a backup, and that's a great living. It really is, and I, and I absolutely love it. But I love playing, and uh, this is special, and I can't thank the XFL enough. It's been awesome. Appreciate your time, AJ. Thanks so much. Over to Fitzy. My stuff out of the ball bag. Hagman, focus here, man. All right, here we go. Thank you, Taylor. When the, your, your <laughs> offense is driving right there with your quarterback, A.J. McCarron, yeah. you know this could come down to you. What's that like? I knew it, 100%. Come on, man. Let's go, baby. Come on, man. Let's go. <laughs> What's that like for you when you're watching them march down the field knowing that this game could come down to your foot? Uh, I knew 100% that it was going to come down to me. Uh, I watch these guys every day in practice. They're, we got a, we got a lot of good guys on our team. AJ, you know, everybody out there is is able to get the ball down the field, and I knew it. Uh, so I just told myself to be ready. Uh, Coach Beck came up to me. He told me before that drive, he said, you're going to have another kick. Be ready. I said, yes, sir. So uh, once we got the ball back, I knew that we were going to have another kick, and I just uh, mentally had to get ready for that. All right, snap, hold. What's going through your mind right then? Bam. Um, nothing. Just strike the ball well. Um, I feel like I've been hitting the ball well all day just uh, had a couple minor you know uh, mess ups and uh, just told myself to strike it well hit it straight I did that on the 50 and it came up short but told myself the same thing to strike it well hit it straight and it's going to go in and it did I love the celebration right when you struck it whoop, arms went up man you knew it right off the bat yeah I knew it right off my foot and uh, you know I've done it before I did it again and uh, it felt good congrats yeah thank you well Fitzy, thank you so much. Donnie Hagman, eyes in the veins, just like he did back at his day at San Diego State when he kicked the school record 20 field goals in one season. He's going to remember this probably the longest because that's a game winner to get St. Louis to 2-0.